Okay, we're back. This is part two. And we have the two of them splitting apart now from the last scene. I hope you watch the first part of this, because otherwise it's going to make no sense. But, um, Lysander and Arius have just split apart some bizarre, kind of magical result of the trauma of him getting his memory back. And, uh, this, this was actually inspired a little bit by the, uh, the Majin Buu thing in Dragon Ball Z. Which is ironic, because that's, um, that's probably my least favorite storyline in Dragon Ball Z. I kind of thought the whole idea of splitting into two halves was kind of wasted on that character. He was like a, you know, a big pink blob. <laughs> he had, like, no personality, but to try it on a real human being, I think it's, it's more interesting. But I like to, um, to pay tribute to my inspirations, so we have the, uh, the Majin Buu theme from the English Dragon Ball Z playing here, and it, it uh, becomes Lysander's theme uh, throughout the game. There's a lot of different versions of that melody that I can use. Um, but honestly, I'm still a little, like, you know, I'm still thinking about the previous scene at the end of the first part of this. Um, that felt very personal. Uh, more personal than it was ten years ago. Um, that line, especially that line, uh, I like you here, I want to stay, that, that cut me deep just now for some reason. Um, and I think I'm just starting to see this differently than I did back then. It's like, when I was going to college, I just wanted to start a new chapter of my life and not even think about the stuff that I had dealt with uh, before then. Um, so it wasn't resolved, and to a large extent it probably still isn't resolved now, but definitely not back then. But I just, you know, I wasn't, didn't really have any interest in making peace with it. I just wanted it gone, you know, out of mind. But it, it doesn't work that way. Um, you might be able to pull it off for a while, but eventually, you know, the past comes back and it'll turn your life upside down if you don't deal with it. And you have to, you know, face it and have like a reckoning. And that's what Lysander is right now. I mean, he's the past. Could not just mine, it could be anybody's. Um, but anyway, um, so in case you, you know, weren't paying attention to the the screen there, um, Arius went to the infirmary once again. Um, thing gets a lot of use. But Nova came to visit him, and he's not there. He's now on this, this cliff, pondering uh, the weightier matters of life and the trauma he's just experienced. Um, oh, man, this whole thing. This song's going to make me cry. I love this song. It's beautiful. It's um, a remix of this... Uh, Ninja Gaiden song, a very well done remix of like, you know, this, for the first Ninja Gaiden, so it's like this 8-bit thing, and now this is like, this guy made this awesome, like, orchestrated sounded ver version of it. Um, but, you know, Nova's coming over there to sort of talk him off the ledge, literally. Um, and it's, you know, kind of a sweet moment for them, because, uh, Arius gets to see that, you know, her and, and all the others in the town, they, they value him for the person that, you know, he became after he, uh, he lost his memory, and, uh, not, you know, not before, and you'll see that, you know, later when, um, when Galdar and Turnus talk to him as well, but, um, you know, he's, he's found acceptance, and, uh, when the, you know, when that happens, when Lysander shows up and, and causes all that trouble, I mean, they, he thinks that they're going to blame him, but, you know, she doesn't, and the others don't, too. And now he's talking about um, his uh, what he wants to do now. He wants to chase Lysander down. Because now Lysander's on his way back to Gallia. Get a fresh load of troops. Take him back to Guardia. And hopefully avoid some bad weather. And uh, finish him off. But he can't really bear let that happen. He has to um, catch up and try to beat him. And that's going to be the, the bulk of this game. Or at least the second act. Um, because this is about the end of the first act, and then the second act is wandering all over the place, um, wandering all over Celeste. So this is, whole thing is almost like a long intro to, like, the main plot of the game, but it's actually more like a, the first act, like I said. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time in Guardia up to this point, and the, the scenes that come after the various, uh, story arcs will move, you know, quicker. You won't be spending quite as much time in one place, um, you'll be on the move. And, uh, so he's gonna, you know, commit himself to that at this point, you know. But Noah's gonna give him a hug. That's sweet. And then we, uh, get to go up into the sky and check out this vista. 
which I hope is a you know a national park if they have national parks <laughs> in Celeste because it's really nice, and you wouldn't want somebody to you know turn it into a Burger King when somebody when the technology gets far enough. Um, boy, that's a long fade out. Come on, let's go. Um, all right, now we have uh, Lysander in the woods at night, and here's Ariel. She managed to escape Seth's massacre. Um, and Ariel's tough. I mean, she must have been caught completely off guard to uh, to get that to have gotten that beat up because you know she is a tough opponent, as anybody who played Master of the Wind can uh, can attest. Um, so Lysander gives her a potion or something, and it's it, you know, gets her up. And uh, so she's very relieved to see him because she's had to, you know, <laughs> watch Arius wander around and undermine their whole plot. You know, not sure exactly what to do. <laughs> Let's start that nonsense. Lysander's, you know, he's good at keeping his cool. He doesn't really uh, freak out very much. Um, you know, he's very uh, kind of a, um, what's the word? I don't know, like a, a calm presence in this scene here for her. Um... And you know, it, it's, it starts to humanize him a bit. I think he, yeah, flush my plan down the crapper. Uh, he makes a very sort of, you know, kind of down to earth sort of joke. It shows that he's not like above, you know, cursing or, uh, you know, kind of seeing a bit of the humor in the situation. Um, it's a bit of a humanizing moment for him. And uh, that was important because if you ever read that tutorial I put up on one of the RPG Maker forums a long time ago about villains, uh, I talked about. Um, a lot of the struggles I had with, with this character. Um, he was too evil, he was too over the top initially, and I revised these scenes with him a lot, you know, while making the game to sort of bring him a little back down to earth. He's still a bastard, but he's, uh, you know, he's he's realistic. You might, he's got, you know, shades and things like that. So now we're back with Arius and Galdar and Turnus, and they're being very, they're all being very, uh, you know, level-headed, and they're telling him that they don't blame him which I imagine just must be an enormous relief uh, for him at this point. And, um, and he's telling them about his plans to go to uh, Gallia. And he's telling them why, you know, it's so important. Or not necessarily to go to Gallia, just to try and beat Lysander to Gallia, which won't be easy. He's already got quite a head start. And uh, even if they do catch him, I mean, what are they going to do? He's very powerful. So, I mean, it's just, they're very much the underdogs right now. And Seth is still out there somewhere. You know, we'll see him again. Not too soon, but eventually. And, uh, you know, they've realized now, him and Galdar, Turnus and Galdar, have realized sort of the error of their ways. Uh, they were, you know, sort of following the council blindly. And now they know that, um, you know, they have a little bit of, you know, a little bit to blame for everything that happened. Um, because they sided against their friend because they thought that they, they believed in, you know, their work. And now, you know, they really regret that. And that's going to sort of bother them for a long time uh, during the second act here. And uh, so they're offering to help Arius to go with him when he leaves. Punks can't just pull his shit. Turns is going back to his old self. And uh, they want to go with him to chase Lysander. And he's asking if Lysander can just teleport back to Gallia. I mean, Gallia. And Galdar says, no, you know, that's, uh, nobody can do that. But clearly they have not met Void from Master of the Wind. Um, well, that's because he hasn't been born yet. But eventually Void will master sort of long-distance teleportation. Um, but it, it doesn't exist, you know, at this point in uh, the history of Celeste. So I think we're going to be done soon. Um, you know, we're, we'll have to do a few more things just around Guardia to prepare ourselves um, for our departure. And then we'll start our trek to Karzai, which is Galdar's hometown. That's uh, a community out in the desert. Um, a little bit kind of like Artagel in Master of the Wind, but on a different continent. Um, but it's, you know, the same kind of look. Although we, obviously, Artagel looks better because, you know, we had the XP mapping and everything. So, oh yeah, and he's mentioned that the weapon shop is finally open <laughs> after all that trouble. So you'll be able to get some new weapons and armor. And we'll save, and we'll, we'll uh, explore next time. All right, peace.